Do you fancy a bit of fun on the cheap? No, don't worry, this is not one of those videos. I'm talking about performance car bargains. So I've scoured eBay Motors and Facebook Marketplace and I found some amazingly cheap cars that are good fun to drive. What I've done is broken them down into five different categories and in each category, there are three different price points. So now I'm gonna to reveal to you the best performance car bargains because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's kick off this video with my favorite category, sports saloons. So there's three different price points, under 5,000 pounds, under 10,000 pounds, and under 20,000 pounds. Now the first car I found is a Ford Mondeo ST in the sub 5,000 pound category. This car here is just 3,000 pounds. It's got a clean MOT, looks good, and it's a 2004 model year. When new, it was just under 24,000 pounds. Now this car has a three liter natural aspirated V6 engine with 225 horsepower, and it can do naught to 60 in 7.4 seconds. It's not too shabby. As for the mileage, it has 114,000 on the clock. But that's why it's 3,000 pounds. There is one thing to look out for when you're buying a used Mondeo ST, and that's rust. They can rot quite badly. This car looks clean though. Now we come to the sub 10,000 pound category. And how about this? 2005 model year, CLS 55 AMG. So it has a 5.5 litre supercharged V8 that puts out 482 horsepower. This thing will do naught to 60 in 4.5 seconds, which is exactly the same time as the current CLS 53 AMG. Now that car new is 87,000 pounds. This old AMG was 74,000 pounds back in the day, but today you can have it for just over 9,000 pounds. It does have more than 130,000 miles on the clock though, so you need to check it over pretty carefully before parting with your cash. These things can have some common problems, often a lot of electrical faults, so look out for those and warning lights on the dash. Another thing to look out for is problems with the air suspension. If the car looks like it's slammed, it's not because it's been lowered, it's because the airbags have failed. Not the ones inside the car, the ones over the wheels and they cost a load to replace. Finally, we come to the 20,000 pound price point and at exactly 20,000 pounds, there's this E92 M3 from 2008. It has just over 70,000 miles on the clock, which isn't that much really, but under the bonnet, it's got four litre naturally aspirated V8, which sounds incredible and puts out 420 horsepower. It can do 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds if you can launch it properly. However, if you buy one of these cars, you need to watch out for something called rod end bearings. Common problem on these, it's the bearings in the bottom part of the engine and they can fail and completely destroy the engine if they do so. So if you buy one of these cars, either look in the ad to make sure that's been done or as soon as you bought it, take it to a specialist such as Evolve Automotive and get them to check and then replace the rod bearings if necessary. Could cost you about a couple of grand though. Next up is the sports car category and the three different price points here are 5,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds and 15,000 pounds. Starting off with the sub 5,000 pound category, we have a Mazda RX-8. This one is a 2006 model year. When new, it'll cost you 25,000 pounds. But today, with just under 70,000 miles on the clock, it's just under 2,000 pounds. Now this car has a 1.3 litre rotary engine, which puts out 230 horsepower. They're pretty special things, though it's also quite a problematic engine, hence the car's low used price. If you buy one of these things, check the oil level because they drink oil. And if the oil level is low, it does suggest that the owner hasn't really taken proper care of it. So they need to be on top of that oil level, otherwise the engine will go. In the sub 10,000 pound category, we have this rather lovely Nissan 350Z. So this car is much more reliable than a Mazda RX-8. As a result, they hold their value better. New, it would have cost you about 30,000 pounds. Today though, this one is just under 7,000 pounds and it's got 74,000 miles on the clock. It's got a really lovely 3.5 litre Natch aspirated V6 with 300 horsepower and it's capable of 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, which is pretty blooming quick. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these cars, they're very tough actually. However, just look out for loads of modifications because yeah, they can either make the car look stupid or it could be done by someone who doesn't really know exactly what they're doing. Finally, we come to the sub 15,000 pound price point for the sports car category. And my pick is this 1995 Toyota Celica GT4. 
for. So when new, this thing would have set you back about £32,000. Today though, this car, around £12,000. It's powered by a two litre turbocharged engine, which puts out 250 horsepower and is capable of 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds. It's a little bit slower than a Toyota GR Yaris, but it's less expensive, though it does of course have 86,000 miles on the clock. It's a Toyota though, it'll be fine. Now, if you'd like to see me drag race a Toyota Celica GT4 against a GR Yaris, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to go watch that video. If you are thinking about buying a GT4, the only major thing to look out for is its suspension. Now this can go off after time and if you hear clunking and noises when you're driving along, it may need a refresh, which isn't exactly cheap. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I need to tell you about the CarWow September sale. We've got over 800 amazing deals with an average saving of £1,500. So click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to go to CarWow to check out the sale. But move quickly because the offers end on the 30th of September. The third category is performance SUVs and estate cars, also known as wagons. And the price points are under £5,000, under £10,000 and under £20,000. In the sub £5,000 price point, we have this 2003 model year BMW E46 330i Touring. Now, back in the day, this would have set you back around £30,000. Today, though, £2,500, though that's because it's got 150,000 miles on the clock. Still, you do get a lovely 3 litre naturally aspirated straight six engine which puts out 234 horsepower and is good for 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Great car, this. However, if you are thinking about buying one, you need to check out a major problem with them, which is with their rear subframes and how they mount to the body. You need to lift up that boot floor, have a good look around, make sure there's no cracks there. Sometimes you can't even see the cracks, even though they are there. If you do have issues with the rear subframe, it's gonna cost a lot to fix, and it will probably write off this car. In the sub 10,000 pound category, there is this 2007 model year Porsche Cayenne S. So when it was new, this cost 50,000 pounds, but today you can have it for just a smidge under 10,000 pounds. However, it has done around 130,000 miles. Still, you get a 4.8 litre natural aspirated V8. It only puts out a relatively modest 380 horsepower. Now you'd think that would mean that the engine wasn't stressed and it probably isn't, though sometimes these things can fail. So if you're thinking about buying one, you need to check there's no exhaust smoke. That can be a bad sign. Also check the coolant level because the plastic coolant hoses can crack and yeah, that can be caused for the engine problem actually. And once again, with any German car, you need to check for electrical issues. They can be rife. The final price point is 20,000 pounds. And bang on 20,000 pounds, there's this Mercedes E63 AMG. So this would have set you back 76,000 pounds in 2013, but today you can have it for bang on 20,000 pounds. In fact, you could probably negotiate a couple hundred quid off that. And for that, you will get a 5.5 litre twin turbo V8 with 524 horsepower and a car that can do 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Oh yeah, what an amazing machine. This one has just over 80,000 miles on the clock. If you are thinking about buying a car such as this though, check for electrical issues once again. Common fault with Mercedes. The next category is hot hatchbacks, and this is where performance car bargains are really to be found. And so our price points are £3,000, £5,000, and £10,000. Starting off with this 2002 Mini Cooper S. When it was new, £15,000. Today though, just over £2,000. This car has a 1.6 litre supercharged engine which puts out 165 horsepower and it's good for 0 to 60 miles an hour in 7.2 seconds. This particular car you see here has 94,000 miles on the clock and if you're thinking about buying one and it's got over 100,000 miles you need to make sure it's had the supercharger service done on it as it is quite expensive. Other things to look out for are rust. These cars can rust quite badly especially around the boot so beware. I actually had one of these loved it. Moving up to the sub £5,000 price point is this Honda Civic Type R from 2005. It's the EP3 model for those Honda geeks. Anyway, when new, this cost £17,000, though today it's just over £4,200. It's got 120,000 miles on the clock, which is quite a lot considering it's such a high revving two litre engine. Puts out 200 horsepower, could do 0 to 60 in 6.4 seconds. If you buy one of these things, just look at the oil. Make sure it's been changed regularly and it's up to level because the car can consume quite a lot of lubricant. In a sub £10,000 price bracket, we have this Mark V Golf R32 from 2007. So this will have cost over £22,000 when you. Today though, it's a smidge under £10,000. It has just over 9,000 miles on the clock, 
which isn't all that much considering the age of the vehicle. It's powered by a 3.2 litre naturally aspirated V6 engine with 250 horsepower and can do 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds. If you're buying one of these things, the key thing to look out for is that its four-wheel drive system works properly. So take it for a good long test drive and also check the service history to make sure the four-wheel drive system service has been done. Otherwise, it could cost you loads to repair. Now we come to our final category, which is convertibles. And the price points for these are under £5,000, under £10,000 and under £15,000. Let's do it. In the sub £5,000 price point, we have this BMW Z4 from 2004 with 113,000 miles on the clock. When it was new, this car would have cost you around £30,000. Today, though, it's just under £3,000. It's not bad considering you get a lovely 3 litre straight six engine with 234 horsepower and it's capable of 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. If you buy one of these things, a couple of key things to look out for. They can sometimes leak water into their boot, so just check that the carpeting in the boot is dry, there's no rust in there. Also, make sure that the roof mechanism works properly because it's electrically operated, and if it doesn't, it costs a lot to fix. For the sub £10,000 price point, I found this rather lovely Audi S4 from 2007. When it was new, it would have cost you over £44,000. Now, though, this one, with 91,000 miles on the clock, it's just over £8,000. And for that, you get a 4.2 litre naturally aspirated V8 which puts out 344 horsepower and can do 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Just be careful buying one of these things though because the timing chain in the engine can snap and write the engine off. Very expensive. You can listen for noises, make sure the engine doesn't rattle and check for a full service history. For the sub £15,000 price point, we have this Porsche 911 996 Carrera 2 Cabriolet. It's a 1999 model year, which would have cost £62,000 back in the day, but today you can have it from £14,999. Well, there's probably a bit of wiggle room in that, to tell you the truth. What you get is a 3.4 litre naturally aspirated flat six engine with 304 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. This particular car has done 113,000 miles on the clock, and so you want to make sure that it's been well maintained and has a solid service history. There's quite a few key problems that you can experience with these cars. I know because I own a Porsche 911 996. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Click on those windows there for some more videos, or on that box there to find out how much your car is really worth. Thanks for watching.